Hello, so everybody, let's try to look at the part two uh, of the questions, number 13 through number 24. So uh, for the first question, what we want to do is we want to uh, cube this one and we want to square this one. So when you cube negative 2 to the third power, so what do we end up getting, guys? That's equal to negative 8 because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. How about the second one? Negative 3 squared, in fact, that's equal to plus 9 because we have two negatives becomes positive. So when you combine them together, we get positive one, which is choice. D becomes the answer. All right, let's look at number 14 here, which with the following equation has a graph that is a straight line. Straight line, that means we are looking at y equals mx plus b. All right, but that's important. But uh, something that's more important is notice the exponent of x and y. Exponent for x is 1, exponent for y is 1 as well. That's what we're looking for. So then which one of them has that? No, this one has a square. That's not it. Oh, these two x and y are multiplied together, so that's not it. These one has a square, so that's not it. Ah, d will be the answer because in this case, if you're to, if you're curious, you can subtract x, so then we get negative y equals x, and then when you uh, divide by negative one, we get y equals negative x. And you know that that's a straight line. Number 15. Which line is not parallel? You see, if it's parallel, then slope 1 is equal to slope 2. What is the slope of this line? That's right. There will be the coefficient of x given that y has 1 as its coefficient. So that means here the slope is equal to a. So I'm looking for something that has slope of a. This one does have slope of a because if I multiply by a, then we get ax minus 3a is equal to y. You see, I have to solve for y by itself and then look at the coefficient of x. And you can see that uh, coefficient is a, that means slope is a. So that's good. How about second one? Once again, I'm going to multiply by a. Then ax equals y minus 3. And then this is in fact identical to this one. So uh, some can say that uh, when they're overlapping, that's also parallel as well. So this is good. Now, uh, third one here. Uh, oh, ax. So what, what, am I, what am I going to do? I'm going to divide each side by a. Then I get to realize that y minus 3 over a, I don't really care about this portion, but slope is 1 over ax. So in fact, c is not parallel to the given equation. How about d? When I divide by 2, then ax equals y plus 5 over 2. Once again, I don't really care about the y-intercept, but the slope is a, so it is parallel. And here, when I add y, then we get ax equals y plus 5a. I don't really care about 5a, but the, in this case, coefficient of y is 1. Then the coefficient of x becomes a slope, which is equal to a. So e is also correct. Now let's look at number 16 here. Now they're saying that these two are equal to each other. Then what is the value of a? That's what they're looking for. Now, when, uh, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply those two things together. Ax plus 3y. So when I multiply those two things together, I, I'll be getting a squared x squared, which matches with the first one. So we're good so far. Outer. So we get plus 3axy. The inner becomes plus 3axy. And then when I combine them together, I get these to become 6axy, but the middle term says negative 6xy. So that means that those two things has to be equal to each other. So in other words, negative 6xy has to be the same thing as 6axy. And you can see that I can divide both sides by uh, xy. And those two cancels away those two cancels away. So we have negative 6 equals 6a. Of course, I can divide by 6. What do you realize about a? That's right, a equals negative 1, which is choice. D becomes the answer. 
Alrighty, let's move on to the next problem. Number 17. So in this case, what, I, what they're looking for is they're looking for the value of P. So easy way that I can do is I can multiply them across. Then you can see that dP is equal to F plus 2. Then how do you find out what P is equal to? Divide by D. So then P is equal to F plus 2 divided by D, which is choice. D becomes the answer. All right. They're looking, uh, they're asking us to find the value of X. So what I can do is uh, I can distribute 3 and the negative 2. So we get X plus 3X minus 15. You see how I multiply 3? Here, X minus 2X minus 10. Now, of course, I can combine them together or I can subtract X's. So I can cancel X's out. And we are left with 3X minus 15 equals negative 2X minus 10. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 15 and add 2x. So then on my left side, I'm left with 5x. On my right side, it's, I'm left with 5, uh, 5 as well. Hence, x must be equal to 1, which is choice B is the answer. All right, let's look at number 19. How do you find the area? Area is 1 half base times height. Base, if you assume that base is equal to 10, what's the height? Height will be 4, something that's perpendicular to the base. So we get 1 half times 10 times 4. So of course, this 1 half, this is 40, so half of 40 becomes 20. Hence, 20 becomes the answer. Alrighty, let's move on to the next problem, number 20. I'm trying to add those, I'm trying to combine those three fractions, but this seems to be difficult because of the different denominators. So then I need to find the common denominator. What, what would it be? 30, that's right. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 10, so I get 10x over 30. Plus, second one, I have to multiply top and bottom by 15. So I get 15x over 30. Third one, I just have to multiply top and bottom by 6, so minus 6x over 30. Then I get 25 minus 6x becomes 19x over 30, so which is choice E becomes the answer. All right, number 21. Uh, in order for you to convert this one into scientific notation, notice I'm, I have to move this one to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, you see? So I guess 7.19. See, decimal point always has to be go after the first value that you see. Multiplied by how many times did I move? 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's not, a, uh, it's not 10 to the 4th power, but 10 to the negative 4th power. Because small number became bigger, so we have to compensate that by negative sign in the exponent. So which one will that be? Okay, choice D becomes the answer. Alrighty, let's look at number 22. Uh, in this case, how would you be able to find the value of x? Yes, uh, we can uh, multiply them across here if you want to. Or I can multiply top and bottom by the common, uh, you know, to make the common denominator. So this one is x plus 1, x minus 1, when you factor the denominator here. And I only have x plus 1. So what I can do is I can multiply top and bottom by x minus 1. Then I get to realize that 5x minus 5 over x squared minus 1, when you multiply those two things together, is equal to x plus 1 over x squared minus 1. Then since those two are equal to each other while the denominators are equal to each other, that means the numerators also must be equal to each other as well. So I can write it as 5x minus 5 should be equal to x plus 1. Then I can subtract x, so we get 4x. When I add 5, I get equal to 6. So then when I divide by 4, x will be equal to 
3 over 2. We'll choose choice D. All righty, let's get going. Number 23. What is the volume? How do you find the volume? Volume is length times width times height. Length and width is height. Uh, this can be length and width, and this can be height. So we just have to multiply those three values. 3 times 5 times 2. In terms of order, it actually doesn't matter. So when you do that, we get 30 as our answer. Yes, choice B becomes the answer. All righty, let's move on to the next problem, number 24. Uh, how do you find the remainder when this one is divided by negative uh, x minus 2? You see, according to the remainder theorem, which we talked about it in class, remainder theorem. Uh, if I have polynomial p of x divided by x minus a, the remainder is simply p of a, meaning whatever makes the denominator equal to 0, put that into the numerator. And the value that you get will be your remainder. So in this case, what makes this one equal to 0? That's going to be 2. So I'm going to put 2 in place of x's here. So we get 2 to the third power minus 4 times 2 squared, plus uh, 2, plus 9. Then here you get 8. Here I get minus 16 because 2 squared is 4, another 4 is 16, and plus 2, plus 9. Then what do we end up getting, guys? Oh, that's equal to 3. So choice B becomes the answer. All right, so with that one, I'm going to close up for today. I'll see you later.